Hello everyone and welcome back. Yes, it's Helen Godden here with our Flower Power 2 quilt along and we only have two more blocks to go. We've got this one and one more to go. We're almost there. This block, block eight, is the Columbine, which here in Australia, we do have them in some gardens and we call them granny bonnets. I think Columbine's a lot nicer name than a granny bonnet, but it sort of describes, you know, that trumpet shape that they have. They really are very lovely with those little pointy bits out the back they're a very cute little flower so that's what we're doing today is the columbine as always i have um, traced my design with the sharpie i have put the batting underneath and i have done my ditch stitching so that i'm ready to now fill in all my different designs i am going to do those horizontal lines through here and i am just going to stitch right over the top of all this hoo-ha here okay because that is just crazy if I tried to stop and start. So I'm going to stitch across and I'm pretty certain that your eye won't be disturbed by that. I'm going to have a bit of a look first because there are some little tricky bits. This is actually background, as is that. So that's what I would do is mark a few areas to remind myself that that is actually all background. Okay, so all of that is kind of background. So I'm going to start up here just to be completely radical. Bring up that bottom thread and I'm going to do my horizontal section which of course looks vertical I know I know but you know what I mean this is such a pretty color I have actually got a brand new paint in stock. It's called um, Pansy Pink and it's that pinky mauve. Such a pretty colour. There we go. And I do like that little lime green patch there. So look, I'm going to have a little advertisement um, commercial break here. So many of you are telling me how much you enjoy this and you know are disappointed that it's going to finish soon. Well, guess what, folks? I do have 16 other online classes. They are paid content. Some of them have painting instruction as well as the quilting instruction, but I have 16 different classes. So I have my blocks of the month, which happens every year where you get one block per month of new design, new painting, new quilting. And it's all done through Facebook, through individual Facebook groups where it's paid members only. In there you have endless access to those video content and to the designs. And I'm in there to chat to you if you need assistance, okay? So that's how I run my online classes. They're mainly in painting with acrylics, painting with dye and quilting. That's all my classes online. And of course you'll find those at helengodden.com. Let's get on to looking at the actual flower perhaps. I've got a little idea. Now this one is kind of the petal on its side. So I'm thinking that you know, I have to pretend that it's on the side, so it's only going to be half the design. Let's see how that looks. Here we go. So you can see I wanted to treat those petals differently to these because as I was saying before, I 
from my experience these are the trumpet is quite often different color to these outer ones and so they are two different sort of styles of petal if you like so now we've got the large leaves to deal with not sure if I like it but you know it's just a different design Now I think that looks a lot nicer with those sort of pointed ends rather than those squared off ends. Okay, so I might unpick that, but that's okay. You can take your choice or do something completely different. There you go. So through this section here, we've got a fairly open area. I'm going to find some horizontal, gently waving lines that I'm then going to fill in, okay, with my stack of rocks. Okay, so I will continue that over in that area over there, but I'll show you what I do for my stack of rocks. I now work along here with a stipple, pretty parallel to each other, and where when you come down with the stipple shape, you keep the down and upward strokes fairly vertical. So here we go with our stack of rocks. And then I just turn around and come back again. And you can see why it's important to have that be fairly vertical. So that's where you travel back. Okay, so I'm same pattern in reverse, up the down, other side, closing off those shapes. Okay, so I'll start it again here. Now there's just something I'd like to point out here. Can you see how in this area I didn't start to make the circular shapes teeny weeny because in theory it's in behind that leaf. So you want it to give the illusion that it's continuing behind. That's why I've just got half of the bottom of the circular shape rather than trying to make a whole little circular shape. A, that's too squeezy and you want it to look like this is fabric behind the leaf. So now I'm going to sort of find where those curvy lines are. There we go, that stack of rocks. I like that. So that's a great way when you do want just a single bubble in a long line. You don't use that technique if you want the bubbles to look like they are just growing and growing. This is a very orderly set of bubbles that we want in a straight line, let's say. The stack of rocks technique as opposed to the over-completing technique of normal bubbles. Maybe you can notice that with bubbles, you over complete the circle. I draw a circle and then keep going around it for another half a circle. In that way, it puts you off on a different side to launch off to the next bubble.
And so that is block eight of flower power quilt along number two. Okay, that's a good way to practice two different styles of bubbles. I think that's a good idea. Okay, I'll see you in a couple of days. Thanks for joining me. I'll be back very soon in two days time with the last block, which is the passion flower. Bye. Thank you.